morning. I've got a couple of projects going on that I'm going to show you guys uh, downstairs in the bathroom and some folding doors that I'm going to replace with normal doors because they're just ugly. But I'm going to talk real quickly about flood zones and building code that gets a little bit confusing. So hold on. So it is January and we're finishing up. I'm here and we're finishing up the uh, free lawn guides. If you haven't gotten the free lawn guide, go to freelawncareguide.com and we've got cool season, Bermuda and Zoysia free lawn guides for you guys, including calendars and everything. They're just about done. You can go there and you can find them. Ooh, it's a little bit windy today. Today I thought I'd just run down real quick about um, some of the background of the renovation and what we had to deal with as far as code and flooding flood zones because a lot of people don't understand that. Um, but it has to do, even if you're not in a flood zone, some of the code requirements when you have to bring the entire house up to code and it varies from state to state but I'll tell you what we had to deal with first of all let's talk about uh, let me put up a flood map and I'm going to show you that you can go to the FEMA flood maps and look a very detailed map showing whether you're in a flood zone or not the other thing we did is we got a flood elevation survey to make sure so I had a surveyor come out and do a flood elevation survey for us so I know I'm in a flood zone, even though my neighbor, that's a few hundred feet away from me, is not. He's not in a flood zone. So we're right on that borderline, barely on it. So I'm gonna show you real quick what, what you can and can't do downstairs and some of the thick workarounds real quick. Let me take you down there. So if you're in a flood zone, you're not allowed to have a livable space within a flood zone. Technically, you're not supposed to have an enclosure. So here is my lower level that's in a flood zone, but I have an enclosure. Well, one reason why, one of the things they're gonna make you do is they're gonna make you put hydrostatic vents. So here is a hydrostatic vent. This is a flood vent. It's not an air vent. If you go inside, you can't see it. It's actually on the outside. I have two of these because this is technically one room. Where's my flood line? What puts me into this flood zone is my flood line. Here's the base of the building. If my flood line is about nine inches right there okay so that's the flood line that puts me in the flood zone now we have to talk about bfes and what's a bfe a bfe is your base flood elevation so if you look at your flood zone you'll have an ae ae stands for that there's a one percent per year that you'll have a flood zone and over a 30-year mortgage a 26 percent chance you'll have a flood this house is 22 years old we've never had a flood off uh, my BFE, if you look at the number, it says A, it says AEEL9, which means that I have to have nine feet over that mark is the first place I can have livable space, enclosed livable space. I have an enclosure. I'm not supposed to have any kind of bathroom. I'm not supposed to have any kind of living stuff. Nothing livable down here. Well, let me show you what we have. Now, the place is a little bit of a mess because I've got a bunch of projects going on and we're trying to get this stuff organized. I got crap everywhere. But if you look, guess what I have? I have a bathroom. So I think one of the smartest things you can do is if you're gonna be doing a project is have the building people come out. I called up the code inspector, the head code inspector. He actually came out and we walked around the project before I started. So I knew that I wasn't gonna run and what problems I was gonna run into, what I could do and what I couldn't do. I didn't wanna get caught halfway through or when I was trying to get that signed off on. Probably the best thing I could have done. A lot of people are afraid to have them come out and I'm telling you, have them come out and discuss it because it was, they're great to work with most of the time. So he walked in and he goes, oh, you're not supposed to have that here. <laughs> well, the house was built 22 years ago. So he basically, I'll talk to you in a minute about grandfathering in things and where you have to bring a building up to code. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But what he said was, if you can bring this, if you want to get a kind of an exemption, I have to be, if my flood mark is nine inches, I have to be 12 inches above that mark there. Anything, open drain, anything. So the toilet, I had to get a handicapped toilet. This is a handicapped toilet. The top of the rim is 21 and a half inches. It worked out perfect with a new tile. I'm at 22. So I saved the toilet. The sink opening. 
The sink opening is obviously above that, so that's fine. However, this was a shower. He said, that's got to go. I can't, I can't let you have that. So we cemented in the shower. You have to pour in cement down the drain and close it off. And then we turned it into a closet. So now we've got an actual little closet here. And I got to put a doorknob on it. So we turned that shower into a closet. What else do we have to do? Well, we have outlets and the outlets were low. So you can probably see over here. That's where the outlets were. And I have them all moved up to about 30 inches. So we have a lot of outlets down here. I had all these outlets moved. I do have a window AC unit down here, but it's high enough. It's actually up, no problem there. So that's the one thing we were able to go ahead and we were able to keep some of this because number one, we weren't exceeding, um, we weren't exceeding the budget that I'll talk about in a minute, 50% of the house value. And we were able to make some little changes. So let me cut in here and say real quick, I'm going to cover 50% rule based on value. And you have to check with your individual county code or city code, whatever covers it. Because sometimes they go by square footage. For us, it's the 50% of the value. I want to make sure of that. Before you start on a renovation project, make sure you check with the code to see what has to happen. What do you have to, when do you have to bring an entire house to code? That's important, so hold on. Let's say my house is worth, this house is worth $600,000. If this house is worth $600,000 and the lot is worth 50% of that, $300,000, that means, and the county says, the county says that my house is worth 300, that means my renovation costs cannot exceed $150,000. But here's a funny note. Let's say I was gonna buy a piece of junk house that was abandoned down there down the street. Well, if I bought it for $500,000, dollars and the city said that the house value, because it was in ill repair, was only $20,000, my budget would have to be $10,000 before I had to go and make that all compliant to the FEMA flood regulations. You got that? So, that's how we were able to do our renovation and not have to come down here and pull out everything down here. But the guy that came down here and talked to me, really good to work with, he said, you gotta at least do certain things down here um, to make it halfway compliant. That's what we did. So I'm upstairs now. And if you uh, didn't watch any of our renovation videos, this house was a piece of junk <laughs> when we bought it, but we were able to buy it at the right time, just before the housing market went absolutely crazy. It started to go crazy when we bought it, but it didn't go absolutely crazy. We were very, very lucky to find this place especially on the location. But we have redone this entire kitchen. I mean, this was ugly. This was uh, oak parquet floors that were chipping up. The cabinets were all dark brown oak. Um, old white rusting appliances, popcorn ceilings. <laughs> it was horrible. So we have completely redone this. And I actually did videos. You can go back on our channel and look, but I repainted myself. I actually show us actually doing this renovation where we painted these cabinets. The in inside of the house has all been redone. Everything has been stripped out. I got all kinds of projects. Every room has been redone, floors, everything. This is the last thing that's bugging me up here. This is a little laundry room and it has these cheap little folding doors here. And these cheap little folding doors remind me of back when I had an apartment, <laughs> when I was 20 something years old. And they're just nasty. They got gaps up here. It's just nasty. So I told the wife, I said, I want to do something, but I want it to make it look substantial. Well, we don't have to worry about this space in here. So I said, I'm going to buy two nice wooden doors and pickle them or, or stain them white stain and put them in here and replace all this. And we have this other little closet right here. And this other little closet is kind of a neat closet. It's a corner closet. So it actually has, it actually is a little V shape. But again, we have this little door here, which I don't like. And I don't need to have that. I've got plenty of room here where I can just open a door. Um, but I think it just cheapens the place. So also, if you want to go back, we renovated, I renovated this entire, most of this I did all myself. I did this all myself. So I put um, nickel gap, some people call it shiplap. 
I put all nickel gap all the way down in here. A new vanity, new toilet, uh, paint, floors, everything, mirror, lighting, fixtures. This was actually, I mean, I think it was like, what, 1600 bucks to redo this whole thing. <clears throat> so I actually have that on video if you want to see that too. But everything in this house is basically, be re the, the roof has been redone, the back, new fence, everything has been redone here. It's been a long year. So here's a look at the, uh, the zoysia lawn down here and it's fairly much pretty much dormant now but we do have we just finished all the lawn guides make sure you go to freelawncareguide.com go to freelawncareguide.com and we have a full lawn guide for bermuda zoysia and cool season grasses now make sure you do it here's the back by the way i'll just show you a little update on this of course we put in this whole fence we, we established all re-established all the gardens the spa was covered with plywood and wasn't working that's been a nightmare we got that finally working um, we put in white rocks all the way around here. We put in this stone walkway. This is a uh, perennial rye that's been planted down there. A new fence around the pool pump, which I'm getting ready to stain. I'll put that on video. So let's go back down here. <clears throat> so this bathroom had, this was wood. This was just a cheap wood cabinet. I'm, I'm priming this. We're gonna paint it sort of a battleship blue. This mirror, this is an interesting story. Um, this was just, we we're gonna throw this out. It was a gold mirror. And what I did was, is I sprayed this with a black spray paint. And then I just sort of stood back with some other silver and just speckled it with this silver and actually came out pretty cool. We're gonna replace that light fixture. I wanna paint this blue. I'm actually waiting on the paint. I've got the doors here primed. And then let me show you what we're gonna put. This is kind of a weird story because um, I started Googling. I went online and was Googling um, solid wood doors, panel doors, and I saw these. And I, when it came up, it showed them at Lowe's and at Walmart. It was the same manufacturer. Lowe's had them for $198. Walmart had them for $99, free delivery. And I was like, there's no way. So I told the wife, I said, I'm going to order three of these. And sure enough, FedEx delivered them the other day. These are solid pine, nice thick doors. You can see them here, I've got three of them. One, two, three. And they have a nice little sort of arch on the top. They're beveled out. And that's what I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna pickle these or stain these pure white, just like we do with our fence, our picket fence. And I'm gonna put these up instead of those stupid folding doors. <laughs> I'm going all the way up to the top of the house. Now we have a turret with a glass room up top of the house. A lot of you guys know about this, but the other day I ordered, isn't that a cool table? Ordered that off Amazon. We can sit here and we can watch the sunset and sunrise and we can see the ocean. Ah, okay, so I'm up here enjoying this lovely view and what's my message to you on a remodel process. Remodel, my, my recommendation is, is that you pick up a phone and talk to the people down at the, your local code office. If you're in a city like Atlanta, it's hard to build that relationship. This is a very small place, so it was really easy. I could walk in and talk to the guy. He came out and he looked over my project. So it was actually kind of easy for me to do with it. I built a good relationship and I looked for those problems that I was going to run into ahead of time. So we talked about the whole project and I told him what I was going to do and, and we sort of worked around what we could and couldn't do. That was, that was very valuable to me. The other thing is understand that if you're going to do, if you're going to submit to the city, you're going to submit a renovation project, you have to work within that 50%. Most of the places use that 50% rule that if your, your renovation budget, you got to go to the county tax website and look at what they have, the value of your home, not the not the sale price, not the estimated value. They have two, they break it apart. They break apart your land value and your house value. Take your house value, you can spend 50% of that before you have to bring everything up to code. That's really important to understand. So if you're gonna go to the city and you're gonna do a renovation project, make sure you fit within there. Now, here's another thing. You know, don't include roofing, if you need a new roof, don't include that in your renovation budget. We put on brand new Timberline, GAF, uh, HDZ, 130 mile an hour rated shingles on this house because we're at the coast. 
Well, don't include that in your renovation budget. That can come later. You can do that separately. There are things that you don't have to include in your actual renovation budget that are just don't make sense. In other words, if you're gonna put a fence outside, don't include your fence in the renovation budget. Just focus on the main renovation budget. And keep those exterior incidental projects separate. Anyways, I'll do the, uh, I'll show you guys, I'll give you an update on that bathroom in the next video and then on those doors, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge replacing those doors and I'll talk to you later. Doc.